in this video we're going to get started with the weapons. Um, now our AI obviously is going to need some sort of starting weapon in their hand in order to attack the player when he runs into it. Otherwise it really doesn't serve much of a purpose to even have AI in the game because they're just going to walk around and follow the player around. It's kind of meaningless. So what we're going to do is we're going to create two variables. We have a variable bull called B has starting inventory which basically says does this creature or player have any starting inventory and then we have the variable array of class inventory which is called starting inventory which basically is does this player have um, if it does have starting inventory what are what is the starting inventory and it's a, it's a version of classes so um, we're going to spawn each class like we would with everything else that we've been doing so what we're going to do is after we have these two variables done we go inside of puzz enemy information mail underscore melee mob and we add our in our default properties the value of those two variables we just created we have b has starting inventory equals true because he obviously has something and then in the, the the first line in the array starting inventory zero equals class puzzle game dot puzz weapon underscore pick which is a class we'll be creating in a second now if you wanted to add other inventory items or even multiple of the same inventory item you could easily by doing that by adding another line here for instance and putting like starting inventory and then in parentheses you put the number one or the number two and so on and so forth as you work your way up the array um, and then you know kind of the same thing if you wanted to do this in more of a dynamic way instead of a static way like this where you're actually loading it from the um, from a save file you would just want to set the array as you're reading from the save file one by one and then event and then you'd also do a loop where you would uh, spawn one by one each of these items okay so now that we have that out of the way we need to move into uh, one quick thing which is inside of our Puzz Inventory Manager under default properties we're just going to set pending fire to zero and, pen, and pending fire one to zero as well and this even though this really has nothing to do with creating the weapons it does stop a bug from happening later on when we try to use the weapon um, so it's good just to get it out of the way because it's a very small amount of code and what we're in essence doing is we're saying that we're going to set this weapons pending fire to off to start off the game because we don't want it to be in the version of actually trying to shoot something and then it just gets all buggy and things go weird so by setting these to zero we, we ensure that pending fire begins at zero and then um, and then it'll work at, you know it'll change based off of what its situation is okay so now that we have that done we go inside a puzz pawn now inside a puzz pawn we just created like I said inside the character information class we just created those two variables. Well, we want to actually use them now. So we're going to go down into our set character information, which is where we're setting a lot of our stuff already. And down at the bottom here, we're going to set if puzz char info dot default dot b has starting inventory equals true. So if the player does have starting inventory from our puzz char info uh, variable that we created, then we're going to add starting inventory. So down here under function add starting inventory, we're going to do a for loop where we loop through the length of the array called starting inventory that's part of our char info class. And, and then we create inventory char info uh, default that starting inventory i. So we go through each uh, section of the array that exists and we create an inventory item for that person or that creature. In this case, the melee mob, would this would only run one time because we only have one item. So the length would be one, it runs once and then it starts off at zero and then it would add that you know that inventory item okay so now that we have that done let's start with our base class of weapon here so inside of class puzz weapon extends udk weapon we're going to create some stuff here we first we have a variable called attaching weapon class this attaching weapon class is our information class for this weapon it's going to tell us what it looks like how it acts things like that it's not going to tell us the damage and things like that that's going to be held in the actual weapon itself we have a function in here called attach weapon two, and this function exists from weapon, but we're just overloading it and putting it in our own code. And we're just going to first we're going to set puzz p to the instigator, which is the owner of the weapon, and we're going to make sure that the pawn does exist. And if it does, we're going to set the pawn's weapon attaching class, which is a variable we've created. We'll get to that in a second. Equals to the attaching weapon class here. That way we can use this inside of puzz pawn without constantly having to refer back to the weapon. Then we're also going to call in a function inside of the pawn called attach weapon to mesh, which is go which we'll get to in a second as well. Inside of simulated function time weapon equipping, we're going to keep the code that exists pr prior, which because this function does exist inside of the weapon class, and we're going to call this function we have right here attach weapon to. And um, finally, inside of default properties, 
we simply have um, a bunch of things that you can check out inside of the PDF or the classroom file that comes with this, the, 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 uh, the uh, paper version, and get an idea of what each one of these does. Or you can go back and look at them yourself. By They're mostly all inside the weapon class that you can to find them in. Um, and just to go through a few real quick, uh, firing states array 0 and 1. Whenever you see this 0 and 1, that's referring to left click and right click. So it, you know you can actually have your regular fire and your alt fire act differently, which is very nice to know. Um, so for instance, uh, for firing states array, we used a state called weapon firing, which is something already created for us inside of the weapon class. If you wanted to create your own state of firing, you would do that here, name it something else, and then up here you would add the functionality. Um, this weapon, being a melee weapon, is just an instant hit attack weapon. So that's all we're going to do. And an instant hit attack basically is like trace. So it shoots this imaginary line out, and if it hits the object that it's shooting at, then it it does the damage. Um, obviously, there's no weapon projectiles because it's an instant hit. It would be a projectile uh, weapon fire type if it was using projectiles. And then the rest, like I said, you can go and check out. Um, obviously, weapon range 5,000 is a very long range, 5,000 units, and something we, we probably are not going to use for a uh, instant hit attack unless you want this guy to actually hit that far away but it's nice for testing purposes to kind of keep it long and then you tweak it shorter and shorter as long once you know it works you can kind of tweak it and lower it as you go along but once again this is the base class so we're just setting a default level at these things uh, later you know depending on everything we'll probably end up changing those things okay so now that we have our base class let's go inside of puzz weapon underscore pick which is another class we'll be creating and that extends from of course our base class Puzz Weapon. In here we're just going to set some default properties. Uh, we're going to set our instant hit damage to 10 so every time you get hit by this thing it does 10 damage. We're going to set the weapon range to 2000 which still is a little long. Um, you, we, we'll probably end up shorting this up and making changes later on just when we start kind of optimizing the game up. And then we have weapon fire type obviously it's an insta instant hit and then the fire interval we set to 2 which is kind of like uh, the speed of which the attack, how long it takes to for the for it to attack. Um, next, we have attaching weapon class, which is our uh, our attaching info class that we mentioned before. And we're going to set that to cla class puzzle game that puzz weapon attaching info underscore pick, which is a class we'll be creating in a second. So now, what we've basically done so far um, at this point is we've gone into our character information. We've said that there is a starting inventory, we've created that inventory, and we've pointed it to this weapon called Puzz Weapon underscore Pick. In our Puzz Weapon, we've basically set the ability to attach this weapon to the, um, to the pawn, but it's, not, you know, it's still not attaching anything yet. Um, now, in all truth, this attach weapon to and these attaching info classes are not necessary in order to use the weapon. Right now, the character, can, the creature, if we started the game, you wouldn't see the weapon, but he has the weapon. We could even take out this functionality. He still has the weapon, so and he can attack with that weapon. None of this functionality actually is required for that. This functionality is required for seeing the weapon, and that's what we're kind of putting in place, because obviously you don't want a game where you don't actually see the weapon and the guy's just hitting you out of no nowhere. So um, that's kind of where we're going with this. Okay, so now we're now that we got the puzzle weapon and the puzzle weapon pick created, we're gonna go and create our base class for attaching our attaching information class for our weapon. It's called class puzzle weapon attaching info and extends from actor, and it's an abstract. We have variable skeletal mesh component me weapon mesh, and this is a lot like the mesh we use inside of our pawn class, where we're gonna use this to reference our default property skeletal mesh component here, and also to change properties as well. In here we have a function called attach weapon info, which is the actual function that will be attaching this weapon to the pawn. Um, and what we do is we make sure there is a weapon mesh. Right, see right now there is no skeletal mesh at the moment, but we will be creating that in a second. And then we call on a function called attach component to socket, which is a function that exists inside a skeletal mesh component. And what that's going to do is it's going to attach the, the mesh right here called weapon mesh to a weapon socket. Now a socket is something you you create inside of your if you go inside of your UDK editor and you go into the anim set editor you can find it in the tabs at the top there's something called a weapon socket or socket manager and then in the socket manager you create your socket you attach it to a, usually a bone located in the skeletal mesh and you move that socket wherever you want specifically and that will allow you to attach objects specific locations to that pawn or to that skeletal mesh and that's pretty much the point so you would move this weapon socket to the hand and then that way when you attach the socket the weapon it goes to the hand of the um, of the actual skeletal mesh uh, 
Okay, so now that we have our PUS weapon attaching info, let's move to our PUS attaching info underscore pick, which is our basic attaching information class for our um, for our uh, pick weapon. And all we do here is inside default properties, we call, we go back to our weapon info uh, object, and we just add the skeletal mesh, which is something inside of our content pack. And that allows us to point to the skeletal mesh, obviously, and then attach that for when it gets called. So now that we have our PUS weapon attaching information classes, and we have our PUS weapon classes, we need to also access our PUS pawn again, and we're going to do a few things here. First, inside of our um, PUS pawn, we have three variables. We have a PUS, we have a variable ca class called PUS weapon attaching info, which is a weapon attaching class. We have a variable called PUS weapon attaching info, uh, which is our weapon attaching info. Uh, instance of that class, and then we have a variable name called weapon socket. So we'll go through each of these real quick. First, we have a variable name weapon web socket. Down at the bottom here, we set web socket equals to weapon socket. So when you're inside of the weapon socket manager, you would set the name of this of that socket to weapon socket, so that you would place it probably in the hand, and then that way when it spawns, bam, there it is, right in the hand for the character or the creature. So um, that pretty much is with the purpose of that. Now. The next thing we have variable class pus weapon attaching info weapon attaching class. This gets set, like we mentioned before, inside of our pus weapon right here where we say pus p dot weapon attaching class equals to the attaching weapon class. So that's how that gets set. Finally, of course, like I mentioned, we have the weapon attaching info variable, which is going to be the instance of that class. So when we, we're going to spawn this class, and uh, because we need to actually create some sort of physical, you know, version of it and put it into the game, so we'll be spawning it. So we go to our function called attach weapon to mesh, and what this is going to do first, we're just going to check to make sure there is a, a mesh for the pawn, and then we're going to make sure a few things check out here, like for instance, if there's a weapon attaching class equals none. Or the weapon attaching class equal is not equal to none, but the weapon attaching info is equal to none. And then the other th option that could possibly occur is if the weapon attaching info dot class is not equal to the weapon attaching class. So that would mean basically that the player or the creature is changing weapons, and you want to spawn a different attachment. If that were to happen, where there is a weapon attaching info, we want to destroy it because we'll be creating a new one, and that's the purpose of this starting code here. Then, if the weapon attaching class is not equal to none, which we hope it's not, we're going to set the we're going to set the weapon attaching info to the spawning of that class. So we're going to spawn weapon attaching class to self. So that's going to spawn that skeletal mesh that we just showed back here in PUS attaching um, PUS weapon attaching info. It's going to spawn that, um, and then we we'll go back to PUS pawn here, and then we're going to set the instigator, which is the actual owner of this. Um, of this attaching info class to self. So we're going to say, okay, uh, now the weapon we have an owner, and so does the attaching information has an owner as well. And then we're going to, lastly, we're going to say if the weapon attaching info is not equal to none, which it shouldn't be at this point because we just spawned it, we're going to set, we're going to attach the weapon info to self. So we're going to call weapon attaching info, we're going to call that function w attach weapon info to self. So we're going to go into our weapon, PUS weapon attaching info. We're going to call, the, call this function, which is attaches the weapon to the socket. All right, so a lot of stuff's going on here. And then finally, of course, if, if, um, if the weapon attaching class is equal to none, we just set weapon attaching info to none. So there's a lot going on here. So let's just real quickly go over exactly uh, you know, what's happened. When, when the game first starts, it's going to check to see if the creature has a starting inventory. If it does, it's, sp it's going to call that function called create inventory, something that exists inside the pawn class, and that create inventory is going to spawn this inventory item. Uh, now, it's not going to spawn the attaching information, it's just going to spawn the weapon itself. So the weapon will then be spawned. Now, because the weapon spawned, and it's, f you know, um, we don't tell it not to equip it, uh, that weapon will be placed into the hands through auto equipping, and will call on the function called time weapon equipment automatically for us so we don't have to worry about calling this function for it'll do it for us upon that moment it'll call function attach weapon 2 and attach weapon 2 is going to set the weapon attaching class for the pawn and then it's going to go back to the pawn and it's going to call a function called attach weapon to mesh so we go back to the pawn and we call this function attach weapon to mesh uh, 
At this point, the weapon attaching class will set to something as long as we set it inside of our each weapon child. In from you know, for instance, pus weapon underscore pick is a child of pus weapon. As long as we set that, it will have a class to spawn. It'll spawn that class, and then it will call that it'll call that instance of the class, which is the weapon attaching info. It'll call that function inside of that called attaching weapon info. So we go inside of our pus weapon attaching info class where we have that function and it calls this function and what this function does is it then attaches that skeletal mesh to the socket and we're done. And at this point when you start the game you should see the pick in the melee mob's hands and he can attack. Uh, well, he ac well, actually he can't attack just yet, we'll be getting that in a second, but he can at least walk around with it in his hands. Now coming up we're going to actually have him uh, swinging at the player.